audio unsilenced. Uh, you have both Josh and Mary. Yep. yep. Good. Okay. All right. So it is now uh, ten oh five. We are coming out of a brief recess and uh, commencing with the rest of our agenda. And first item up is uh, uh, Stephanie Curran. Stephanie. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Um, I thank you for your time this morning. It's good to see you all. And in case you think I might have moved into a mansion, I, to, to save a little time, I decided to do this from um, one of my spaces in the convention center because my office is a little bit of a longer walk. So I'm coming to you live from the convention center. Uh, as you know, um, uh, well, you don't know this, but the, the program that I'm presenting today has been in, in the works for several weeks. Um, it's something we kind of dreamed up in the summertime. And just because of the COVID, um, the basically the revenue obstacles we have because of COVID, we weren't able to make it pencil out. <clears throat> We're in partnership with the Spokane Parks and Recreation Department, Evergreen Regional Volleyball Association, and the Spokane Youth Sports Association um, in this idea. And we're hopeful that CARES money will be able to make, help us make it come to fruition. Next slide. Um, the part you do know is that um, throughout this COVID um, situation, I have been committed to not having the, the PFD be a victim of this. And we've actually had some excellent opportunities to serve our community in ways that we normally haven't been able to when normally we are booked solid with events. Um, we've been reinventing our, venue, our venues and trying to find ways to be more of a, a community partner. Um, this summer, we served as a homeless shelter at the arena, and then most recently, we're in a, we were an election voting site last week. And then the convention center has been doing continuous um, COVID-19 training for the VA hospital here on site, as well as serving as a clean air shelter in August, or excuse me, September, when the um, state of Oregon was on fire. So um, what I'm presenting today is another opportunity that we see to contribute to our community. Sorry, next slide. And that is a countywide opportunity to, to create recreation leagues for low and moderate risk sports in the convention center. Um, we identified the partners that I mentioned earlier as um, entities that are able to um, create the rec leagues and who actually already have them in place, but they've just not been able to do them this year. And they have um, obviously a long list. I can tell you SYSA has about 6,000 kids right now they don't have any um, access to rec leagues like they normally do. So the plan would be to turn the exhibit hall into an area to do three on three volleyball, youth soccer, pickleball, basketball, and then SYSA has a great youth and agility fitness program. And then just below in the Centennial Ballroom, Cornhole Leagues, and then uh, Spokane Parks and Rec has line dancing for the special needs population. So you'll see with this, we have opportunities for everything from adults to youth to seniors to the special needs. Um, we're also certainly open to others. These were just the partners we were able to identify. So if there are other entities out there like AAU or another entity that would be interested in programming this space with us, we're definitely open to that. These were just the three that we were able to identify originally. Next slide. The reason that um, we feel confident that we can do this is because thanks to the um, CARES money we received earlier from you last month, we've been able to go through the process of GBAC STAR certification, which basically makes us experts in the protocols required. The governor also has a list of guidelines set for recreation. And so these include, as you will see, the things that we're all very, very comfortable and familiar with these days, masks, physical distancing, all the hygiene protocols, cleaning protocols, ventilation of the space, records and contact tracing. And then the governor has outlined that no spectators can be at any of the rec leagues other than one parent or guardian if you have a minor child. Um, next slide. So the benefits of this program would be health, well-being, as well as economic impact. Oops, one, can you switch to the next slide? Perfect. Um, we're providing an opportunity for people in our community to gather safely. We're also hoping to prevent unsafe gatherings of people choosing to do this on their own without all the protocols. Um, bringing back sports to our community, especially now that we have limited daylight and there's not as many opportunities for after school or after work rec leagues or any kind of recreation. And then also a, an added benefit will be to bring people into our suffering downtown. Um, we all know we can't have a vibrant econ and economically stable city or county without a strong downtown core. And this is especially true for our tourism industry, um, the hospitality industry that has been hit so hard, which of course includes the PFD, the hotels, the restaurants, bars and retails, as well as the airport, all of those things, uh, all of those entities when we are back after COVID and we are able to bring tourists back into our community, um, we really, they really rely on a, a strong downtown. So we wanna make sure we can keep as many of our businesses intact as possible through this 
this crisis. Next slide. Um, all the things that the, our citizens are craving right now are the things that we will be able to provide through this program. So safe gathering. I know people are able to go to restaurants. There are some things that we're all able to do socially distanced with masks, but being in a, but gathering is one of the things that we're really suffering without. Obviously having fun, getting some exercise, participating in an activity, feeling like you're part of a community and just general health and vitality. And then also the added benefit of having this at the convention center is that it would get people closer to the downtown core and help them um, maybe make a decision to explore downtown either before or after their rec league. Um, obviously the holidays are coming up. There's usually some you know, festivities downtown and lights and hopefully that will happen again this year. And it'll give people an opportunity to go explore that, which of course will lead them into the local businesses, which of course not only generates revenue for those businesses, but it keeps people employed as well as generating tax for the city, county and the state. Um, I do know that the city has, um, has granted about 75, um, thousand dollars for activating um, Riverfront Park and another 30,000 um, towards restaurant incentives and a shuttle program. So um, my hope is that this program here at the convention center would then drive people into the community that then could take, take advantage of some of the things the city has committed to. Next slide. Um, so this is what our request is. You will recall that um, you allocated $240,000 to the PFD recently for an NCAA bubble concept. Unfortunately, the NCAA wasn't really able to pull that together. Um, it fell apart a little bit in Orlando and then it kind of seemed to fall apart everywhere. So we still have that money allocated to us, but we won't be able to use it. So what I would like to do is redirect that $240,000 towards this program and then an additional 300, about 318,000. Um, and that money will be used to cover operating costs, which are just the utilities, the cleaning and the staffing of the building and then equipment rental we are going to have to rent the courts and um, have pay to have them delivered here and set up and taken down um, our partners um, that i've mentioned earlier they have the things that we need like the volleyball nets and the pickleball nets and the cornhole boards and all of that kind of stuff but we will definitely need to pay for the infrastructure we have it figured out at 42 days for the exhibit hall and 30 days in the ballroom. So that'll be um, basically through, we would start it if, if granted this money, we would scramble this week. We have everything ready to go, just push the green light, get everything set up, and then we would start next Monday and we would go through the holiday, through the end of the year, taking a few days off, of course, just around the um, Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays. Finally, um, I just wanted to say that kind of the main reason to do this was um, originally was to get, you know, health and fitness and getting everybody um, safely uh, recreating. And now at this time of year, I feel like it's really important that we can kind of end this year on a positive note, um, support our businesses. I know the hospitality grant that you've recently allocated is in the process of being allocated to the businesses, which is great. That's going to keep them open, keep them paying their leases. Now we just like to get people in, able to be um, recreating healthily and then going into downtown and serving those businesses. So we'll kind of send them, um, they'll stay open with the grant that you gave them and then we'll send them, send them the business. Um, so that's our thoughts. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions for Stephanie? I don't see the screen yet. Okay, uh, Barry? Um, yes, so Stephanie, um, you know, you know, looking at other places around town too, because we, you know, like the Hub Sports Center out in the Valley, you know, those places, because um, I know they've been trying to look at different things that they're doing as well. Um, so are you coordinating with them? Um, yeah, so I, I actually was interested in that, and I had heard that they um, were doing AAU leagues in the hub, but I would absolutely, I think it would be fantastic to be able to partner with them. I only budgeted in this ask the cost that I knew of at the convention center, um, so I'm not sure what, if they have been granted money and that they have the funding, but I think that is a great idea um, to absolutely. Because they're kind of the only other, I mean, you've got the warehouse for, for basketball and stuff, but... You know, they're, they're kind of the other two entities mm -hmm. that I guess I would like to know that there's some coordination going on, you know, because they, I think, again, it, it, you know, we're trying to do downtown, but we're also trying to be, keep kids healthy and safe and get them um, doing the activities that they're normally used to doing that they haven't been able to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I totally agree. And we have, um, I know Phil pretty well, and we have not partnered on anything. I don't think we've ever partnered on anything. We do some of the same, you know, middle school basketball, I think, plays out there in P&Q. So we share some events, definitely. So do you know, um, I can certainly reach out to him. Do you know if he has been given any funding to do things like this? 
or has he, he, he has not from us. Okay. All right. That, that, that I know. Okay. Um, Maybe Sally. Yes. I, don't know. I think he, he got the small business grant and then, you know, I'm not sure how much he received in that first round. Um, but, you know, I guess it's, it's, if we're, if we're looking at it from a sports perspective, I mean, I want to make sure we're looking at it holistically across the entire county and not just, um, you know, down, downtown because, um, you know, some people it's harder to come downtown than it is to go out in the valley where there's parking, you know, free parking and all those things. Right. Um, you know, so I just, you know, we're looking at it, um, as a, as a region, um, and, you know, so, so that's, that's, that's one, one comment I have. Um, I think the other comment is just, uh, you know, obviously, you know, this is meeting all the, the new guidelines from the state on recreation that they came out with in October. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and then just, um, working with the health district on, you know, making sure everything's, you know, meeting, meeting their guidelines as well. Yes. Yes, we had been working with the health district earlier in the summer um, when we were originally trying to put this together and then we just couldn't make it pencil. So we had um, gotten, uh, Dr. Lutz had uh, confirmed that we were in, in line, but we can certainly re, um, reconnect with the health district before we open. Right, uh, particularly just because I think October 6th was when those latest guidelines came out, came out on recreation, you know, kind of looking, you know, how that was going to look in the fall. So, um, so yeah, so I just want to make sure that we're, you know, meeting all of that. Um, I mean, otherwise, I think it's a, a great idea. I think, um, you know, Carrie can weigh in on, you know, ensuring that it meets all the CARES guidelines. Um, and, but I think, you know, this is, this helps with the mental health aspect that we see. I mean, I had a little park by me that there was, you know, groups playing pickleball every day from like nine to 10, 10 30 or 11, um, you know, and so I know that's that's part of like the senior community um, that that they do, and so um, having that space to do that is is good. And then you know, and and having your space, you know, again allows them to be distanced and and all of that. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Josh. Yeah, Stephanie, did you touch base with the uh, the municipalities for the for the, for their leagues? Uh, not yet. So the only three I was connected with are the three that we had discussed, but I can certainly, um, I did not put any money in this um, ask marketing. So um, I was trying to keep it as, you know, as realistic and um, reasonable as possible, because obviously this is a big space and it's expensive. Um, mm -hmm. The cleaning protocols required under COVID guidelines are really where the bulk of the money comes in now. Um, so I didn't put any money for marketing. So we were thinking we would obviously use our social media um, all of our entities would. Um, I'll certainly reach out to DSP um, for some assistance. And then our mail, you know, we all have our, uh, the league, the mailing list. I can certainly look into Spokane Parks and Rec are the only, is the only real municipality I've talked to. Garrett has talked to the county, um, your Parks and Rec department. I know it's not yeah. quite as robust as the city one is right now, but he has been in connection with that department. I'm sorry, I can't remember the, the person's name. Um, D Doug Chase. Yes. So I will, um, I can get, we can look into, yeah, as many, I mean, we've got this huge space and we've budgeted for seven days a week that so that we could have it open to anybody and everybody who wanted to. So we wouldn't have to turn anyone away. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then one more question. So are you charging rent to these or you're, you're no. Okay. No, that's what we couldn't make pencil before because once the COVID um, cleaning guidelines came in, it, it's so expensive. And then obviously this massive space is expensive. So well, when we tried to do this earlier this year, we just couldn't make it pencil out. So this is the CARES is the opportunity that we have where we, the PFD, will only be taking this money to cover our costs. And then the recreation leagues will be just using it um, at no charge. Okay. Um. And, and one thing I'm curious about, because I know a, a friend of mine, like they went over to Linwood for a volleyball tournament, but they, they couldn't actually stay with their daughter. I mean, so they, they didn't allow any parents in. Um, yeah, so actually the governor's guidelines states one parent per minor child. Um, and okay. so we can, yeah, because they want to eliminate basically eliminate spectators. And then there's a whole actual system. It's really actually pretty slick about have certain teams, you can only play certain people. So it'd be three on three, which is, which fits into the social distancing guidelines. And then 
it's a really interesting rotation how the three only play like the same kind of group of people they alternate around and then you no know, um, and there's not a lot of standing around so like we won't need to have really any kind of like food or beverage or anything on sale because there's not you're in here and you're playing and you move to your next game and then you leave and come in the same door and exit a different door so i'm not sure if in linwood maybe they had different guidelines then or if it was a county thing um but as far as i know if you have a minor child you you can have one parent here. so are you still planning on doing the seven elimination competition to see which parent goes gets to go in <laughs> there you go we can do like uh whatever uh rock, paper, scissors to see which parent gets to go in and which one gets to go downtown and shop and maybe have a drink or something. Yeah. Okay. Any other, any other comments? Okay. So, uh, chair's open to a motion. Well, I guess one comment before we do a motion is, is Stephanie, I'm just trying to figure out how we reach out and with the others. So it's, uh, so we're looking regionally, um, I guess they would just have to come back for their own separate ask um, at that point. Um, yeah, that's the one thing that that's the one piece is if um, I mean, it would be great to have the hub involved 100%. That would actually I mentioned I actually had brought that up earlier because I thought it would help also create more of a countywide, um, you know, right. benefit. So I guess, yeah, I can I can share our plan with with Phil and then he can see what kind of funding he might need and then I guess he could um, I guess he could come back and ask for whatever he would need. Right, or maybe the, maybe the two of you, I'd rather have it be joint, you know, so it's it's a continuation of this program, I, I guess is what, what the thought is. Um, but, but you know, to get you funded so you guys can get up and going, but but again, I, I, I want to make sure it's regional. Yeah, and I can call him, and actually Matt Meyer is my, um, the person who is on my staff who is working on the logistics of this. So Matt and I can call today, call Phil today and kind of explain, um, assuming that this gets approved, and then see how we could assist him. So if he needs, um, you know, we have contacts that, you know, we're renting the, the courts and getting it delivered, and maybe we can kind of do something simultaneous. So I'll see what, I'll reach out to him. Thank you. So the expectation, as I understand it, is that we would go ahead and fund this so we can get you going because time we're time sensitive now. But in the meantime, you'll reach out to uh, Phil and uh, we'll hopefully get another uh, package to be able to extend the program out into the county, uh, the valley. Um, we can deal with that as soon as you guys have got numbers that uh, Carrie is comfortable with. Okay. Is that reasonable? Okay. I like it. Oh, we're back to you, Commissioner Kearns. All right, um, Mr. Chair, I move, first I'm gonna make a motion to uh, redirect the previously um, allocated $240,000 of CARES Act funds uh, to, to be redirected towards the uh, Public Facility District Community Recreation Leagues program as presented by Stephanie Curran today. I will second that. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously then. Then Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I move to approve and authorize uh, CARES Act expenditures up to the amount of $318,100 uh, to um, help fund the Public Facilities District Community Recreation League program as presented by Stephanie Curran today. I will second that. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thanks so all much. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care, Thank Stephanie. You. I got to go set up some volleyball courts. I'll see you guys soon. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, back to you, Carrie. Commissioners, we have uh, Jim with the Fire District 9. I believe he's on. Good morning. All right, Jim. Okay. Uh, so I think the floor is yours, Jim. Wonderful. Thank, thank you very much, uh, commissioners, everybody that's online. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to uh, 
so to speak, justify our CARES uh, Act funding request. Again, uh, my name is Jim Walkowski. I'm the uh, an assistant chief with Spokane County Fire District Number Nine. Um, one of the areas that I'm responsible for is emergency medical services and training at Fire District Nine. So again, thank you uh, for for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Uh, in, in front of you this morning is a request that has six six components to it or six elements. Uh, the packet is in front of you for your your review and I can depending on how you would like this done I, I can review each one of them. Um, I have not had a chance to uh, hop online and see how the others have presented so I don't want to do something that um, you prefer that I do or do not do. Oh, you might just give us a brief overview of uh, uh, what the nature of your request is. I think we all have uh, the uh, printed um, handout. Oh, and it's on the screen. So why don't you just review it's on the screen for us very, very, very briefly. Uh, absolutely. So there's an overview across the top, and it's it's consistent with, I believe, what the other agencies have utilized as an overview or justification, specifically to Fire District 9 uh, so submitting their funding request uh, for our ability to respond to the COVID-19 public health emergency. And as I mentioned earlier, we have six components to this request. Uh, component number one or request number one in the middle of the page is supply and equipment acquisition and reimbursement. Um, specific to this request, this is uh, reimbursement of expenses utilized to purchase disposal medical supplies, uh, specifically in this case here, uh, a primary focus on respiratory uh, management supplies, which as I believe most folks know that are online um, is specific to uh, the respiratory illnesses that we have associated with COVID-19. These were uh, costs that were not um, part of our 2020 budget and these are for expenses for those above and beyond what was budgeted March 1 to December 30 of 2020 and that's for a total of 14,956.86. Uh, that's request number one. Request number two is specific to uh, suction units. Uh, our current suction units um, do, uh, do not have the ability to exhaust through a filtered system. So as we suction a patient's airway, whether they're intubated or not, um, we, we are basically emitting this particulate matter um, out of our suction units. And what we're requesting is funding to purchase suction units that have the filtering ability, um, also along with the ability to easily uh, sterilize, decontaminate those suction units compared to the dated uh, suction units that we are currently utilizing today. Uh, one, of the, one of the greatest challenges we have as first responders is properly disinfecting our equipment um, after the incident, and this will give us uh, a higher ability um, and more effective ability uh, to, to do that. And so that request for the suction units is in front of you for $15,150. Uh, item number three, request number three is oxygen and airway equipment storage bags. Uh, currently our bags today are, um, again, going back to the disinfection and being able to sterilize our bags. Uh, the bags that we utilize today uh, are designed of an absorbent material that um, allows for the absorption and cross contamination. And why it's specific to an oxygen airway bag is this is the bag that we place at the head of the patient that we're, ga we're, we're gathering all our tools to manage their airway is coming out of this equipment bag that we have to stage literally beside the head of the patient. And it's very difficult um, to disinfect. And, and, and honestly, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to disinfect and, dis and decontaminate the bags that we're currently utilizing today. The bags that we're requesting are made of a material that has a urethane coating, which you can literally uh, spray the disinfectant on and, and wipe off and rinse off with water and not have to um, worry about laundering them in a way that currently we're having to do today. That's really ineffective. That request is for, uh, there for $7,889.20. Request number four is to purchase 11 of the Zoll Autopulse uh, CPR devices um, along with accessories and warranty. 
I, I believe you've had um, at least Valley Fire uh, present theirs a few weeks ago uh, to you regarding the auto pulse system. Really, um, this request and the next one, the more that we can keep first responders away from the areas that are high index of uh, cross-contamination from the patient, uh, the better off that we are. Uh, the, the, next, the next piece of that is also um, these patients are, are, are labor intensive. And if we can automate a portion of our resuscitation and or patient care by utilizing a device such as Autopulse, um, the discharge coming out of the patient's airway is uh, minimized because the responders are not on the chest uh, continuously doing compressions. This uh, piece of equipment does that for us. So that request is in front of you for the auto pulses uh, for 193,211.66. Moving on to request number five. These are for 11 of the Z-Vent portable uh, patient ventilator units. Uh, this um, is a, a ventilator unit that would allow us to, again, transition to an automated approach uh, for ventilating patients. Currently today, I'm sure as many of you are aware, uh, we have to uh, ventilate a patient with their responder or two at the head of the patient utilizing a bag valve mask. So that bag that we squeeze to, um, to be able to uh, ventilate the patient uh, we currently have to do that at the airway today, again, with those fluids and discharges, et cetera, that become particulate matter. Uh, that, is, um, that is a high route of infection potential, ex exposure potential for first responders. And as a matter of fact, across the, the world, most of the responders that have been contaminated um, are due to their uh, procedures that are taking place at the airway of the patient. Once the patient is intubated, where we would be able to place the patient onto um, the ventilator and be able to minimize and reduce the amount of responders uh, that are in the potent, uh, potential contamination field. And then secondarily, uh, being able to effectively ventilate them without having to rely on a bag valve mask uh, continuously for the transport uh, to the, the care facility or hospital. That request is in front of you for 219-089 and 16 cents. And then last but not least is to purchase 10 of the automatic external defibrillators. And this, this request is not for manual defibrillators, but these are for automated uh, defibrillators um, to put on units that we currently don't carry those on today. Um, in our response, um, as our run volume increases, the need to have the ability to defibrillate in the field along with uh, CPR, the chain of survival, so to speak, that we advocate for in our community, this gives us the ability to do that. Uh, you combine an AED, the auto pulse, and um, that Z vent oh. ventilator, it really is a force multiplier for our, our response and the delivery of patient care. And that is in front of you for 37,558.88. And that, that is the end of uh, the, the requested items. Very good, thank you, Jim. Uh, any questions? Mary, Josh, Mary? No, I, I think uh, we've seen this from the other fire districts and, and um, <laughs> I think it's all, you know, help people, people our first responders safe. Um, as well as protecting the patients um, that they're coming in contact with. So um, I would be for this. Okay. So chair is open to a motion then. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve and authorize the expenditure of CARES dollars of up to the amount of $488,000 to cover the cost, the funding request for supplies and equipment necessary to respond to COVID-19 uh, as presented by Spokane County Fire District 9. I will second that motion. Okay, I've got a motion to second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Thank you and thank you, Jim. Wonderful. Thank you very much. We really appreciate okay. it. Okay. Next on the batting list is uh, Kim Ferraro. Kim, are you joining us? Okay. This is on the West Central Community Center and 
Uh, so who's going to be presenting on behalf of the community center? Um, my name is Susan Diaz. I'm the accounting manager there. Okay, we're we're having difficulty hearing you. Are you on? Are you on the phone? I am. Okay, so Susan. you're Susan. What's your last name, Susan? D I A S. Yes. Oh, Diaz. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, my fellow commissioners, are you going to be able to hear her okay as she goes through a presentation? All right. Uh, uh, let's... I, I can, I can, I, I can kind of make out some of what she was saying. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll give it a shot. If, it, if it's a problem, I'll, I'll speak up. Very good. Well, go ahead, Susan. The floor is yours. Um. So the bulk of my ask is to cover the additional labor that's necessary to provide childcare at this moment. Um, I only, we are only asking for the additional labor um, that is above and beyond what we would have normally had in labor expenses prior to COVID. Um, so the labor and benefits total 22,203. Um, and then we are currently offering our um, departments that are not in the building an internet stipend because they're working from home. It's just a small stipend of $25 a month um, per individual, individual. And so that is the $2,525. And then we are asking for two pieces of equipment. Um, one piece of equipment is a water bottle refill station. As a community center, we are a frequent hub of a place for people to stop, use the restrooms, and catch a drink of water. Um, everyone from homeless to the bus population to um, client seeking services, either at Head Start, WIC, uh, or our childcare uh, facilities. And unfortunately, we cannot offer water because we only have the drinking fountain, which has to be shut down because of COVID. Um, uh, this particular water bottle refill station would directly fit right where our previous water fountain was. Um, so we're only looking at the cost of the equipment for that. Um, and then we are asking for an electrostatic sprayer to help disinfect our areas, um, especially once we can open up our WIC offices to infants. Uh, it's very important that we'll be able to um, sanitize correctly in between clients. And then the last piece of equipment is several pieces of equipment. It is a mug air fil filters for our central air system. So this is the cost of replacing all of the air filters in the areas of the building that we're using. It is recommended by the CDC um, for any internal areas that don't have uh, proper outside ventilation so unable to open our windows or doors um we feel that that's going to be very important moving forward into our winter season and um, so the grand total of our ask is only twenty seven thousand three hundred and fifty dollars and would significantly help the center okay thank you susan uh, any questions uh commissioner kearns no no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Mary? Um, so I just wanted to just make sure with Carrie that this all meets the criteria and that the, it'll be installed and, and ready to go before December 30th. Yes, Commissioner. The, on the internet stipend, um, all the other costs I, I have reviewed uh, substantially. The internet stipend was really important. And, and I don't know if Susan uh, really went into any in depth, but this is for their disability program. Susan, do you want to talk a, a little bit about that and fill in the commissioners on that? Absolutely. Our um, adults with disabilities program, our community access program, because that's such a high risk population, they are not going out in public, which is normally the service that we provide. Instead, we've been providing some online experiences for them which in some cases 
becomes quite complicated. Many of our clients aren't capable of logging into Zoom themselves, and so they need additional help with that. Um, sometimes we go to um, some of our favorite places and take videos and then come back and then share those videos with the client. Um, our entire eight-person community access team is all working from home right now um, because, they, because of the limited client interaction that we can have. And so this, this small $25 a month is um, per employee. It's what helps in subsidize the, mostly their additional data that they need because a lot of their internet uh, winds up being um, mobile. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, I think that, answers, that answered my questions, so I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right. Mr. Chair, I move to approve and authorize uh, the expenditure of CARES dollars up to the amount of $27,350 to cover the costs as presented by the West Central Community Center today. I will second that. Okay, I've got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Let's record reflect motion pass unanimously. Thank you, Susan. All Thank right. you very much. Very good. So next up, uh, we have uh, Leanna, and I don't see a Leanna. I reached out to her and I have yet to hear a response. Okay. But I want to let Ken know that we finished her items. So, so somebody's uh, joining right now. Oh, there's there's Kim. There's yeah, Kim. Uh, so Kim, uh, 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 good news. Uh, we just approved your funding request. The bad news is we won't listen to you because uh, we're already done. <laughs> <laughs> Susan did a great job of explaining the the, the request. You there? I think she's gone. She was there. And okay. Well, uh, Carrie, do you want to fill in the uh, blanks on this one here for us? The teen aid? Yes, Leanna should be on. I think we're a little early. Um, Leanna came uh, to me and has worked really hard on her proposal. This has um, been several, several revisions in the making. Uh, the, I think, you, Commissioner, she saw the truancy uh, proposal asked, asked first that came through, and then I did a little bit of research with uh, Tori Peterson at Juvenile to find out <clears throat> public schools are not filing uh, truancy petitions this year. They've only filed three. So I reached back out to Leanna. Leanna um, indicated that they had a program that provided support in their center for families that they were um, attempting to implement and had, had been running but couldn't um, continue it as families uh, could not afford to pay for it. So they're coming to us and asking at this point for $52,000 worth of CARES funding to cover this last couple of months um, in being able to, to open this up to their community partners uh, and have uh, kids uh, have a safe location to go to um, and allowing parents to also uh, continue working. Uh, so Leanna, are you on the line yet? Hmm. I don't, don't see her there yet. So it's a it's a remote learning center basically um, for these these families that they've worked with a lot of the uh, their area partners. They uh, she's come up with what she believes is uh, probably a realistic amount of children that will be placed there, uh, and it does meet the CARES Act requirements at this point. Okay. Any questions for? Either Commissioner Kearns or Cooney. Um, so, Carrie, because I know that the initial one came in a lot, so you're feeling comfortable with this um, at this point in time, and and with the salaries. I mean, I guess as you know, every time someone asks for salaries, then it's um, they're they're able to do the time and effort reporting needed. Correct. 
I've been working, Commissioner, with all of uh, all of the proposals and making sure that time and effort certs are sent out to everybody. Matt Decato from my office has been reviewing everything as it's coming in and been working with everyone to get them uh, to where we need to be, you know, for audit purposes. So yes, definitely. Okay. 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 And then if and if you know, for the smaller nonprofits, if they don't have a good um, timesheet. I do have a standard timesheet that we use as well that we can send out to folks to have them fill that out as well, along with the backup that shows that they, you know, that they were paid the, these expenses. Um, so I think we'll be, you know, we'll be able to um, withstand any audit scrutiny on any of these. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, one of the questions that I had with Carrie when we were reviewing this last week was, uh, you know, this is a uh, a one-shot deal and there's 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 really no continuity effort of this after January 1 so uh, what they can do between now and the end of the year is what they can do uh, and stuff but what they can do is better than doing nothing so um, you know, the, so we brought it forward for your consideration so what would be your will you okay moving forward with it yeah I, I'm okay. Um, I, I'm not seeing a total dollar amount on the screen, or am I overlooking it? It's the 52000 There yes. we are. There we are. Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Chair, move to approve and authorize uh, CARES dollars expenditures up to the amount of $52,000 uh, to cover um, this program to be offered by TNAID as presented by Carrie Gridall today. I will second the motion. Hey, got a motion and a second. Uh, any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Let the record reflect the motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I'll, I'll reach out to Leanna and let her know. I'll send her a quick email here. All right. Very good. So we're going to be doing this again this afternoon. So uh, uh, thank you, Carrie, for all the work you're doing. I know that uh, you and Cindy are doing an incredible job. There's a lot of work involved in this and trying to make sure we hit the deadline. So thanks for all you're doing. Thank you, commissioners. Okay. It means, so, a, lot. It means a lot to these nonprofits and the community to be able to present to you and, and for the funding. Thank you. So, um, uh, Commissioner Cooney or Kearns, uh, any other miscellaneous items you want to deal with now? or? Otherwise, we can go into executive session. So um, we're going to go into executive session uh, to discuss uh, pending contingent litigation and a review of a performance of a public employee. Um, the review of the performance of public employee will be first and should take uh, approximately 10 minutes. And for that will be all three commissioners plus our executive management team. Uh, the second uh, will be pending potential litigation. And that should take uh, probably about 20 minutes uh, for a total of 30 minutes in executive session. Once we are done, uh, that will uh, uh, complete our business for this morning. And we will reconvene this afternoon at 2 o'clock. So uh, it is now uh, 10.50, and we will move into executive session. <laughs>